I'm going to show you how to take malted barley, hops, yeast, and water and create beer. But we're going to do it the easy way. We're going to use this. I'm Sean in Alaska and this is Homesteading for Everyone, a new segment here on the channel. So I thought it'd be fun to share some different skills that you can use in your home that you can do yourself. It doesn't matter if you have a big mansion, if you have a big ranch, a big farm, homestead or whatever, or if you live in an apartment. Um, you'll be able to do everything that I'm going to show you in this series of videos right from your own kitchen. It's pretty simple and it, well, you may never ever be interested in homesteading. It's fun just to learn the different things that you can do. The first thing that I decided I would do would be brew a batch of beer. And that's because, you know, you see me with beer in every one of my videos. And I actually bought a kit a while back. Um, probably about five years ago, six years ago now, uh, that I used to brew a, a batch of beer. And then they had a refill package. And I was thinking about that. And I said, shoot, I'm going to do it. So here's the refill package, right? This is, we're going to make a winter dark ale. Under the lid of that, repa or, uh, of that refill package is a packet of yeast. This is brewer's yeast. And then we're going to use, pick this up here. We're going to use this as our fermenter and what they call a carboy for the entire process. Now, the kit that I bought right here is from a company called Mr. Beer. And this is not an endorsement for Mr. Beer, but if you've never brewed before, it might be kind of cool to check it out. I'll put a link to Mr. Beer down below. I'll get nothing from it. I'm not endorsing them at all, other than the fact that their kits are really easy to use. Um, their kits come with a fermenter. I'll pull it out here and show you. Right, there's the Mr. Beer fermenter. And on the back of the fermenter, it has both imperial and metric. So they've got a four quart line an eight, and an 8.5 quart line. And then they've got the liters over on the side here. So basically the idea of this is to fill it partially with water. And then we're going to put the wort, W-O-R-T, which is a mixture of malt and water in. And then we're going to top it up to the 8.5. The reason why I'm not using this is because when I dug this out of the storage shed the other day, um, I couldn't get it to quit leaking from the spout here. Not their fault, completely my fault. The way that I had stored it, I had thrown some heavy stuff on top of it, and right here, this is cracked. So if you get one of these kits, do yourself a favor and store it safely so you're not putting anything heavy on top of it. And by heavy, I mean we're talking I had like 60 pounds of stuff on top of this. Um, so I can't use this, but I did manage to locate in town one of these which is going to be a lot more fun because it's actually clear and you'll actually be able to see everything that is happening while it's going through the brewing process so let's get started shall we so every mr beer kit um, comes with a no rinse cleanser and you use half of this for sanitizing now then you use the other half for sanitizing your bottles when we get to that point this is going to be a two-part video because the actual process takes about four weeks to go so even though it takes four weeks to go most of the time you're waiting there's maybe an hour and a half worth of work in this entire process and you can have great beer brewed at home for yourself so what i've gotten here for this which is going to be a little different than using the mr beer is what we call an airlock bubbler i'll show you how that works a rubber grommet for the top of the three gallon carboy 
my can opener, the top for the airlock bubbler, and a whisk because I'm going to use the whisk to melt it, to, to mix everything. All right, so I don't want to use the rest of this right now because I have um, I have bottles that I'm going to actually use instead of the plastic bottles that come with the kit, and I'll show you that process is pretty neat. So I picked up this stuff called One Step No Rinse Sanitized Cleaner. Um, if you enjoy doing a batch of beer with a beer kit when you get one, um, look online, just Google brew stores near me. Um, I actually did that yesterday when I was trying to put all this, originally put this video together, and it turned out that there's actually a new brew store in town, and I never even knew about it. Called him up, um, or sent him a message on Messenger, and then uh, told him what I wanted, and he said, meet me at 9 o'clock, and yes, right now we are in a, you know, extreme medical thing going on. Everybody knows what it is. I'm trying to stay away from talking about it. But uh, the neat part was uh, he had it sitting outside of his door ready for me and I walked up. He opened his door long enough for me to slide my card in and pull it back out and I came back home again. I had to go to the store to pick up some groceries anyway because I haven't been out in a week and I was kind of hungry. Um, so this stuff here is saying use one tablespoon in a gallon of warm water. So I have a tablespoon right here. We'll just use a regular one. All right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pour the water in first. So that's why there's water in here right now. And this is warm tap water. I will tell you right off the bat, right now, that when you're going to brew beer, do not use tap water from your sink. And the reason why you don't want to use any tap water from your sink is because tap water from city sources either has chlorine or, or chlor chloramine in it. Sprinkle that on there. And that will destroy your beer. Uh, I can use tap water here if I wanted to, because uh, we're on a well um, at my buddy Will's house, and that's where the, the mobile man cave is parked right now as we get ready to go build. Um, but I went ahead and bought gallon water because our well water, as you can tell by looking at the kind of a yellow sheen on there, a lot of iron, a lot of iron in the water here. So we're going to sanitize this. And this sanitizer, just so you know, I mean, usually I'll, I, I use one called Iodophore, which is an iodine-based sanitizer. But this one here is cleans with oxygen, does not contain chlorine, bisulfates, organic compounds, or phosphates. Very, very okay to use. Um, so it's using oxygen, basically, to clean everything that I have in there. The other note is that if you're not going to use the Mr. Beer uh, container, and you're, you want to opt for the, the three-gallon jobber like I have, if you notice here, I have this marked off the same way as the Mr. Beer container was marked off. Looks like I'm cutting the top of my head off here, doesn't it? <laughs> Back up. There we go. Um, so this is the one gallon mark, and this is the 8.5 quart mark, which would be just over two gallons. That way I'll know when I'm putting the water in here that I'm getting everything correct. So we're going to let that soak. And while we're doing that, I'm going to set up over here in the, on the stove and get the other stuff going. So before you get started with the first segment of this, pull the can out of the of the pan here. There are instructions for what you should be doing right here on the back of the can. All right, Take a picture of it with your cell phone because you're not going to get this wrapper off this can. Um, basically what I'm going to do here, it says uh, follow the instructions to process or will produce two gallons of premium quality beer. Um, sanitize all the equipment. We're doing that. We're going to remove the yeast from under the lid. We did that. Um, we're going to Place the can in hot tap water for approximately 15 minutes. We're going to fill the keg with cold water to the 14 quart mark on the back, and we're going to place four cups of water into a clean three quart pot right here. And then what's going to happen is we're going to put this in the warm water so that it will loosen up. Imagine maple syrup in the refrigerator and how stiff it is, and when you warm it up in a pot so that it'll pour. So we're going to do that so that we can pour that into the three cups of hot water here. When we're done with that, we're going to take it and we're going to mix it into the carboy container, the fermenter vessel that we have, and then we're going to top it back off with water. In this can is already liquid malt extract for beering, or for beering, for brewing. Um, it's hopped already. We're not going to add any hops or anything. If you want to get into that later on, I will tell you that there's a great book on home brewing. I'm sure you can pick it up still. It was my first book that I ever bought, and it was called The Complete Joy of Home Brewing by Charlie Papazian. And just like the mantra throughout that entire book, relax, don't worry, have a home brew. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. So one other thing to note that is on the top of the can, I think you can see that right there. See that big lip? That big lip's there so that the yeast can stay underneath while the lid's on it. That's the side of the can we're going to open, and that's the side of the can I'm going to put down. So 
basically I'm just putting that in a pot on my stove and I'm going to turn the gas on for that say that one for me I'm going to turn the gas on for that heat it up not too hot I want to get it warm I want to get it really warm to the touch okay there we go I want to get it really warm to the touch not hot to the touch um, and then that way it'll loosen it up this is going to be a great experiment too because this can expired in 2015 that's why I got it so cheap when I first bought it uh, because it was close dated I'll tell you right now it really doesn't make that much difference <clears throat> so I also picked up a funnel and I'm going to take a little bit of our sanitizer water pour it in here ah got a mess got a mess And I'm not pouring a lot in there, I'm pouring, I don't know, maybe a quarter or two in there. And I think we'll take the funnel and we'll throw that in the sanitizer as well. So there's how much I have in here. And now, just swirl it around. And this is the same instructions for doing the Mr. Beer kit. Put the sanitizer in, swirl it around. I'm going to pour it all back out again. And we're just going to let that air dry. There's no need to clean. It's a no-rinse sanitizer. You can rinse it if you want but all you're going to do is add pretty negative things to your beer. Sanitation is the number one thing you need to worry about when you're brewing beer. Um, there is wild yeast all throughout your house, all throughout everywhere. And if you do not sanitize everything properly, you're going to end up ruining a batch of beer. Um, and it's a sad day. Every brewer who has ever brewed beer has ruined a batch of beer. I've got my computer on in the background to keep me company. <laughs> So we're going to get this started and we'll get on to the next stage. When I said make sure you shoot the instructions, I wasn't kidding. I did it myself. Um, brewing beer from kits while well, we're waiting for everything to warm up here. Matter of fact, I should probably start the pot to boil. Brewing beer from kits. All right, that's about done. Is a super simple way. is a super simple way to get started into the hobby. Um, I'm going to warn you though, I will not be held responsible if you decide to do what I did and go completely crazy with the hobby. At one point, and I looked today to see if I had any pictures posted on the old Facebook site or anything, and I didn't, but at one point I had my entire garage in the lower half of my house when I lived in California. The entire two-car garage was a complete full-on brewery. Um, I'm what they call an all-grain uh, brewer, a masher, so I would buy all the grains and everything you saw in the intro pictures there, I would buy all of those and I would actually create beer from that. So I would do a mash and everything else. You don't have to do that. If you want to just get into the hobby and see if you want to do it, you can make very, very good beer from kits. Um, and like I said about the homebrew stores, a lot of the different homebrew stores put their own kits together too, which is very awesome. So you could go on their website and you could find out how to brew or, or find out find different kinds of kits to make your own beer at home based on whatever you like. Um, there are a bunch of homebrew sites on uh, Facebook. If you're a member of Facebook, there's a bunch of homebrew forums all over the internet. Um, so just check it out. If you, if you like this video, if you like the idea of making your own beer at home, give it a try. So, dump that out again. We're waiting for the water to boil. And a watch pot never boils. I start my brew day off, by the way, with really good coffee. I don't drink at all when I'm brewing beer. If, if you think that making beer will make you drink more, to be honest with you, when I actually make my own beer, I drink less because I don't want to run out. You know, I, I, I limit myself. I go, oh, I can only have one today because that next batch is waiting. The process of brewing beer, it's going to be in this uh, carboy for approximately 10 days, 10 to 14 days. It's a little cooler here in my fifth wheel trailer. Uh, right now, as I'm looking at the temperature, it's 56 degrees in here. Usually it's warmer. I've got the heater turned off right now. Um, but it's going to take about two weeks to ferment, and then I'm going to bottle it. It's going to take about two weeks to condition once it's in the bottle. Um, at that point, I'm actually brewing another batch of beer. The usual batch size that you brew, um, generally speaking, if you're not using a Mr. Beer kit, would be a five-gallon batch. Um, and that'll give you about two cases of 12-ounce bottles when you're done. So we've got our can sitting in here. We're bringing four cups of water. The cup is eight ounces, so 32 ounces, a quart of water to a boil. And then we're going to pour this into that. And we're going to take it off the heat. We're going to pour the uh, malt into there. We're going to stir it all together, and we're going to put it in here. But because we're going to have to put it into here, 
We need a, a, a cushion, a thermal cushion for it. Now we got it right there. Dirt. Because if you're using plastic or you're using glass, you do not want hot liquids to hit the, the container to begin with. Especially if you're using glass, because if there's a crack in there, you're going to be in big trouble. It's going to shatter your entire glass carboy. And I don't think you really have any idea how much cleanup's required once you spill unfermented beer on your floor. So we're going to take this up to that first line that I put in there. And four quarts is that first line, so that is a gallon of water. And that is a gallon of water. At this point, everything that you've got in your sanitizer, you could actually take it out and put it on paper towels, but it's not in my way, so I'm just going to leave it sitting in the sanitizer for now. Um, the water's heating up. We're brewing beer. It's a good day. <laughs> okay, we're starting to come to a boil here. So I'm going to do this with two cameras. I've got the other camera set up right here. This has been sitting in there for 15 minutes, and hopefully it's going to be liquid enough. Pull out my sanitized can opener. And mainly the part that I'm most worried about is the cutting heads on here. Um, when you're brewing at home, this is not as, or when you, when you get into grain brewing, it's not as critical uh, because you'll be boiling your malt. But because this is a kit and I want the best chance for survival, I am going to be as careful as possible. We're done using the can opener. Doesn't have to go back in again. Multi ooey goodness. Multi multi ooey goodness. Give you a peek. Liquid malt right there. Water is at a boil. So instead of removing it from the heat, I'll just turn the heat off. And then we will grab our whip and start pouring that yum stuff in. You want to mix this up really well. You want to make sure that this dissolves. The reason why you're supposed to do this off the heat is so that it won't burn on the bottom. You know, like any other syrup, when you pour it in there, if it sits, sugar sits on the bottom of the pan, you're going to have issues. And like I said, this is hop extract, so the hops are already in here, all the bittering and flavoring hops. With this batch of beer, because I'm not actually using a finishing hop on it, there's really not an aromatic compound, or uh, an aromatic part to this. Now I'm going to cheat even more. The hot water that I used, oh, I still have my heat on there. Turn that back on when the camera's off. I'm going to pour that inside the can. Use it to rinse out the rest of the ooey gooey goodness. There's no real worries about too much water in this part as long as you do not exceed the line in your fermenter for um, the final liquid product, the final liquid height. So I want to get it all out of here. The basic process with beer can best be explained as this. You're, you're using yeast to convert the sugars 
in the beer to alcohol. So as the yeast feeds on the sugar, there are two byproducts. One of those is CO2, the gas from them. The other is alcohol. So the level of sugar in your beer dictates the level of alcohol in your finished product. There we go. So I want to get as much of that out as I can, and I pretty much cleaned the whole can out. There's just a very little left in there. Well, this talking, I've still got the cell phone camera going, I think. I don't know if I turned that off or not. I must have turned it off. Yep, we'll see. <laughs> hey, watch the pot never boils. I may have screwed up and missed that entire last section. I did. I didn't record it. My apologies. But I did record this part, so we're good to go. A note to self, a note to anyone out there that's going to do something like this. Like I said, the sugar and the, um, it's in this malt extract will get everywhere. Looks like my battery's blinking. I'm going to recharge and I'll be right back. So as the next part here, hmm, we'll need our funnel. You want to be really careful doing this. It's much easier with the actual um, Mr. Beer container. The goal is to pour this in there and not get it all over the table and the floor and everything else. Also be very careful. Hot, hot sugary liquids will burn the heck out of you if you are not careful. Uh, matter of fact, before I get going any further, pour some water in my container and kind of clean down the sides till I get to the water on the bottom so that I do not have a sugary mess on the inside of my pot. Sugar, sugar, sugar. All right, that's done. I'm going to turn it here. Well, I guess I can leave it towards this camera so you can see what I'm doing here via this one. So I need to take the level right up to here on this. Let me probably use a funnel again. Better safe than sorry. Did I spill some? Yes, I spilled some. Not a whole lot though. At this point, it's kind of nice to get as much oxygen in there as you can. And the reason for that is because the yeast needs oxygen to feed on. And the reason we're adding this extra water to the top is to get it up to the level we need to be, but also to cool it down so that it's not too hot. If your temperatures are too hot, you're going to kill your yeast. Yeast. Packet of yeast. Packet of yeast. Now we're going to take this and, and stir it. Do I have something to stir it with or not? I probably don't. So I'm probably going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. I do have something I could use to stir it with, but I don't want to get that dirty and have to clean that up as well. <clears throat> all right. I think we're all mixed up here. So, if oxygen is not supposed to be incorporated into it when you're done, what's going to happen with all this space right here? Well, as the yeast starts to feed, I said it's byproduct for what? That's right. You get an A for the day in the class. CO2 and alcohol. CO2 will raise and push the oxygen out. And that is why we have an airlock bubbler. 
Sprinkle the yeast in there. We're good to go. We will let nature take its course. But first, we will top it off. We will scoop. I'll bring this over so you can see it. Leave a little liquid on the inside of that. Taking this and popping it on top of there. Taking the lid and popping it on top of there. And then shoving that in the hole on the top of your bung there. Now what that's going to do is as the CO2 comes up, it's going to release all the air out of the inside. And basically that's your thermometer for when your brewing session is done. Just giving it a mix so that the yeast gets down in there. That's it, we'll come back and see what this looks like in a bit. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. We brewed this beer on the on Friday morning, and I kind of jumped the gun and pulled all my heaters out of here because it warmed up. I don't know if you can see that right now. I'm gonna walk over here and show you. It's four degrees outside, and when I woke up this morning, it was fifty-two degrees inside, and and that's what will cause what kind of happened here a stuck fermentation. So, if your fermentation really doesn't take off on the first day like it should. Um, you need to move your, your beer to somewhere that's a little bit warmer. Um, I went ahead and plugged in the electric heater, had that running all night, and fermentation is actually happening. All those bubbles that are on top right now is actually yeast growing. So it's feeding on the sugar, it goes to the top, uh, then it breaks up and goes back down to the bottom and keeps going up to the top. This is uh, an ale, and ales are top fermenting. That means they, they do most of their fermentation on the top. But we've got this thing plugged in. Let's see if we can get lucky and see a bubble happen. Doesn't look like it. This thing should take off a little bit more today now that I've got it warmed up. And when it does, I'll go ahead and, and post that on the end uh, to let you see what it should be doing. But a stuck fermentation is nothing to worry about. Uh, just warm it up. Get it somewhere a little bit warmer. Get it somewhere a little bit nicer temperature-wise. Uh, and on a good note, it's now 72 degrees inside instead of 50 degrees that it was this morning. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just doing it slow right now. Normally, this, this is a 10-day process, like I said. Uh, fermentation from start to beginning on the end of this kit is supposedly 10 days, and that's with fermenta fermentation temperatures between 65 and 75. Uh, that's why I kind of figured it was going to take me two weeks to actually get this to ferment out, because it is a bit cooler here in the fifth-wheel trailer. Oh, those boxes over there? Yeah, that's going to be the next video um, that'll actually come out before we bottle the beer. Um, I'm going to show you how to braid bread. A uh, real simple and easy way to take any bread that you do at home and uh, braid it by hand to make it look just beautiful. So you can either use a mix if you're more comfortable with that. And I just happen to have a couple of boxes of mixes around. Or you can use the same technique I'm going to show you when it comes to uh, um, any one of your favorite scratch bread dough recipes. That's normal. That's the yeast growing on top. That's the bubbler. If you can tell, the water level on the inside is lower than the water level on the outside. And it just bubbled. That is what we are looking for right there. All the bubbles from fermentation. You see all that little goop up on top too? That will all disappear. That will all go down to the bottom and, and pretty much lock itself in a, in a layer of sediment on the very bottom. But now we have healthy fermentation. Good to go.